Hi, I'm Ashlyn and welcome to your practice. Today we will be doing a short post run flow. Um, and the reason I'm still wearing my hat is because I did just go for a run and I don't think it will be a good idea for you to see what my hair looks like after a run. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start just right away on all fours. So come onto your hands and knees and line up your index fingers so they're about parallel. Spread your fingers wide, push the floor away from you. And then we're gonna come into a quick shoulder stretch before we keep going with the lower chain. So walk your straight arms overhead and just come into a brief puppy pose. Stretch your outer hips back, press down into the tops of your feet, lengthen, and feel really your outer upper arms spin away from each other. And then walk your hands back in. Now, just for a moment, you're gonna sit back onto your heels and you might get here and decide, okay, this is actually enough stretch in the tops of my feet and ankles. Maybe you stay right here. If you want a little more, cup your right kneecap with your right hand and tent your left hand behind your back and to the left. Keep your right toenails on the ground, but lift your right knee up towards your chest. You might get like half an inch and that might be it. If you are someone who maybe wears high heels a lot, you might find you can go a little farther back. You could even bend the elbow to lean back. And then let's switch sides. Lower your right knee, grab your left kneecap with your left hand and cup your right hand behind your back. Keep your left toenails pressing into the ground and lean back as you lift your left knee up into your chest. Again, if you want more sensation, you can even bend your right elbow and lean back more. And then lower your knee down. Come onto your hands for a moment and curl all 10 toes under. And just check and make sure that your pinky toes didn't try to escape there <laughs> or didn't successfully escape anyways. And try to keep your heels centered at your sitting bones and then sit back onto your heels. And so you might get here and with your hands on the floor in front of your knees, this could be enough sensation. You might get here and decide, I want more. So maybe you sit up and place your hands down onto your thighs. And we'll just hold this for a few breaths here. Keep rolling the shoulders back. Make sure you're sitting up nice and tall here. Good, and really actively push into your toes. This is definitely one of those parts of the body that tends to get a little bit neglected. Um, you know, we're so focused on opening up the lower chain, like the hamstrings and the quads, and even like things like the IT band and your hips, that it's easy to forget that we're kind of stuffing our feet into these tight shoes for long periods of time, and we're taking steps over and over again on the feet. So really good idea to just give your toes, give your arches, give your plantar fascia, just a little bit of extra space. All right, hopefully that was a good distraction while we were here. Place your hands out in front of you and tap the tops of your feet down a few times. And then let's head back into downward facing dog. So take your hands shoulders width apart, spread your finger bones wide, and first step your feet back into plank pose. And then with your feet about hips width, lift your hips up and back, come into downward facing dog. Now we just went running, so what you might do is take your feet really wide if it still feels a little bit tight in the backs of your legs, you could even shorten up your stance so you're in a smaller down dog. Always fine to bend the knees in your down dog. Try to keep lifting your sitting bones high. Roll your inner thighs slightly back and drive your heels down towards the floor. Even if your knees are staying bent, that's fine. If you're ready for it, you might walk the feet in, take the feet a bit closer, maybe bike your legs out a little bit as if you haven't already done enough cardio. <laughs> and then with your next inhale, stretch your right leg straight up and back and pause here for a moment. Trace your inseam with your right big toe and suck the top of your left thigh bone back and take a steady breath in. With your exhale, bend your right knee, shift forwards and step or help your right foot all the way through. Come down onto your left knee for a moment here. Good, and then take your hands up to your right thigh and see if you can lean your hips back enough that your left thigh is completely vertical. Zipper the top rim of your pelvis to the bottom of your chest and then reach your left arm straight up and your left toes can be tucked or untucked, it's up to you. Now as you next inhale, reach way up through your left arm and then with your exhale, tip your torso to the right in a side bend. Now you're welcome to let the hips drop forwards a little bit, but just try to keep that same zippering feeling in the lower belly. So thinking of keeping the pelvis upright. 
Next inhale, come all the way back up. Place your left hand down next to your right instep and reach your right arm straight back behind you. Bend your left knee and see if you can deliver your left foot to your right hand. And if not, maybe go around and grab a strap. You can grab a shirt, a hand towel, just something that will help you to get a little bit of a quad release here. And then hug your right outer hip in and turn your chest open and to the right. You can stay up on your hand, totally optional. You might decide to lower onto your left forearm or you can put it on a block or something if you happen to have one nearby. But this is a prop optional class. And then come back up onto your hand, let go of your foot. Tent your hands either side of your right heel. Walk your right foot a couple of inches ahead of your right knee. With the left toes curled under, straighten your right leg and flex your right toes skywards. You could decide this is more than enough sensation as you plug your right thigh bone back into your right hip socket and reach your top sternum forwards. Some of you might decide to flatten your palms on the floor. You could even bend your elbows and work your elbows towards the floor. See if you can really discern though the difference between spinal flexion that's rounding the spine and hip flexion right at the hip joint. Can you keep this pure hip flexion? Now you're gonna take your left hand and place it at your inner right ankle on the floor. Keep your left toes curled under and just know it's normal to wobble here. Bring your right hand to your right hip. Turn your chest to the right. If anyone wants a little extra balance challenge, stretch your right arm back behind you like you're a human Mobius strip. <laughs> and then bring your right hand down to the floor and then curling left toes under, step back to downward facing dog. Inhale, reach your left leg straight up and back, three-legged down dog. Exhale, shift forwards, step or help your left foot all the way through. Bring your right knee down to the mat. You decide if the right toes are curled under or untucked. Start by bringing both hands up to your left thigh. Then lean your hips back just enough that your right thigh is totally vertical. Roll your right inner thigh back. And again, try to zipper the top rim of your pelvis to the bottom of your chest, almost like a little tiny abdominal crunch. Try to keep your pelvis upright like this. Left hand will stay on the left thigh. Now reach your right arm straight up, inhale. Exhale, tip your torso to your left. And so with each inhale, really reach out through your right fingertips. And with each exhale, find a little bit more space to lean to the side, just opening up to the hip flexors. Next inhale, come all the way back up. Place your right palm down next to your left instep and reach your left arm straight back behind you. Bend your right knee. See if you can deliver your right foot to your left hand. Again, feel free to use a prop or some kind of a jerry-rigged strap would work. You gently pull your foot in towards your glutes if there's space to do so, as your left outer hip hugs in and back. Maybe you stay up on the right hand. And just if it feels like a good idea for you today, you might lower your right forearm to the mat or maybe to a block. Keep twisting your chest open into the left. And then let your foot go. Walk back up onto your hands. Staying up on the fingertips, bring your left foot maybe an inch or so ahead of your left knee, and then straighten your left leg and flex your left toes skywards. Hug your left outer hip in and back. Even squeeze an imaginary meter stick between your inner thighs. Again, this could definitely be more than enough. You could decide it's time to flatten the palms. Maybe you play around a little bit with bending the elbows. Keep your priority though, reaching the top sternum forwards towards the big toe instead of bringing your head towards your foot. Rebend your left knee, curl your right toes under, step back to downward facing dog. And come down onto your knees, sit over to one side, and find a seat. Now, extend your left leg straight out in front of you. And I want you to hook your right ankle over your left thigh in a figure four. You're going to flex your right foot, 
and then start with your hands flat on the ground behind you. And if you want more, you can actually tent your hands to make this a little bit more intense. Keeping the right ankle flexed, walk your left foot in towards your left sitting bone. Press down into your hands to lift your chest up towards your inner shin. If you want more sensation, cup your hands. If you still want more, try walking your left foot and or your hands closer to your glutes. Keep spreading the collarbones, lifting the chest. And re-extend your left leg out, stretch your right leg out, and second side. Hook your left ankle over your right thigh in a figure four. Start with your hands flat on the ground behind you, unless you know you want to come up onto the fingertips. And then slide your right foot in towards your right sitting bone. Maybe you pop up onto the fingertips. Wherever you are, lift your chest up towards your inner shin, making sure that your left foot is still nice and flexed here. Broaden your chest. So the more you can really keep your spine neutral here, so in this case, you'll probably want to focus on opening the chest so we don't collapse in, the more intensity you'll be able to get in the hip stretch. Take one more steady breath here. And extend your right leg out. Extend your left leg out. Good. All right, that concludes our short post-run flow. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you liked what you saw here, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. I try to put out at least one or two new classes every week. And follow me on Instagram at the button below. Namaste.